Here we see a common rendering of Newton being hit on the head with an apple and declaration he discovers gravity. Of course, he did not discover gravity. Gravity had been a concept well known on planet Earth for many, 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 many eras. And what Newton discovers is a relationship between objects and the gravitational attraction between them. There was no indication in any of his notes records that an apple fell on his head. What is most closely resembling a situation is him seeing an apple fall, likely, and wondering how it is that the apple doesn't fall away or fall up from a tree. He extends this out to thinking what really uh, got us to the universal law of gravitation we'll explore today was his looking at the moon and wondering how come the moon doesn't crash into the earth or fall down to the earth. The groove in gravity, Newton's Law Universal Gravitation page, you have this space right here to jot down a quick summary of Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation as presented to you from a short clip from the Schoolhouse Rock series. There's these wonderful cartoon characters that were shown Saturday mornings back in the 80s, I believe it was. And uh, great icons, little jingles to get in your brain about interplanet, Janet. I'm just a bill, conjunction, junction, what's your function? I believe this was Schoolhouse Rocky right here, the main mascot. We learned all kinds of things through Schoolhouse Rock. We had Science Rock. You're going to watch one of those next right here, Victim of Gravity. There was also Grammar Rock, America Rock, several others. But uh, the one which you're going to pay most attention to is a scene from the Victim of Gravity where they portray the classic image of Newton being struck on the head and then discovering gravity. But as you well know, he was really pondering how is it the moon doesn't fall towards the earth or the earth fall up towards the moon. Right after this scene plays is where you want to pay close attention as you'll get your description of Newton's law of universal gravitation. The narrator will say it more than do the sing-songy victim of gravity jingle that'll get in your head for maybe ever, but at least next time you're awake at three in the morning that little jingle will go through your head. And don't worry about having to pause the video and write it down. I will play it again after you see the whole video clip of Victim of Gravity from Schoolhouse Rocks. Most likely for many, the very first time. Enjoy. Down, 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 gravity. Helping wash the dishes and I drop a cup it's of And hit the ground Wish I could fall up instead of always falling down Down, 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 down I'm a victim wow. of gravity yeah. Everything keeps falling wow. down on me down, down. No matter where I go, the wow. forces that I know Pulling me down, 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 down It's all around town now it's like a magnet wow. deep inside the ground. When I lift something up, I wow. can feel it pulling down. It pulls me in the pool. It wow. pulls rain down on me. I'm a victim of down, 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 down. Gravity. Round the earth and shines its silver light. The earth goes round the sun and makes the seasons right. It is love that makes the world go round. You see, how earth can have it. But please, don't tell Mary T. Down, 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 down. Without Earth's gravity to wow. keep us in our place, we'd have no wind at all while be in outer space. The sea would float away and so would fields and towns
law of gravity says that every object in the universe pulls on every other object. The bigger the object, the stronger the pull. But the greater the distance between the objects, the weaker the pull becomes. Come back, Mary Jean. Don't call me clumsy, don't call me a fool. When things fall down on me, I'm following the rule. The rule that says that what goes up comes down like me. I go to the down. As promised, next will be a section from that Schoolhouse Rock video that describes Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. I'll have it repeat twice, and then you can rewind as much or play back as much as you need. Newton's Law of Gravity says that every object in the universe pulls on every other object. The bigger the object, the stronger the pull. But the greater the distance between the objects, the weaker the pull become. Come back, Mary Jean! Newton's Law of Gravity says that every object in the universe pulls on every other object. The bigger the object, the stronger the pull. But the greater the distance between the objects, the weaker the pull become. Come back, Mary Jean! Here we have Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation in symbols, or the equation. So the force is gravitational force is directly proportional to, as the masses are on top, directly proportional to the product, multiplication of the masses, and inversely proportional to the distance squared. One way we try and help you remember the law of universal gravitation is to maybe think of it as the law of chaperoning or the law of dating. As chaperones are well trained on universal laws and uh, particular gravitation. When you have two bodies, masses, objects, charges, like we had for Coulomb's law, we had charge 1 multiplied by charge 2. So charges, bodies, masses, objects. When you have two objects that are close to each other, the amount of attraction is high. If I were to have two bodies at a dance, uh, that is if you were dancing and not just jumping up and down or leaning against the side of the walls, bobbing your head up and down, if there were actually people uh, interacting on the dance floor with each other, maybe couples dancing, the closer the two bodies are, our chaperones will intervene and have you increase the distance. This is an inverse relationship, so as that in uh, verse uh, portion increases, the responding inverse over here decreases. Wow! And the increased distance results in less gravitational attraction. Concerning the mass side of things, the universal law of dating applies here. If you have more charge, and there's this greater attraction when the charge is increased. If you have two masses, two bodies, the more there is to be attracted to. So the universal law of chaperones, or universal law of dating, to try and help you remember, thinking about Newton's law of universal gravitation. Continuing with our little bit of a throwback here, groove and gravity. In the space to the right, provide the formula for Coulomb's law. This is on page zero of your study guide, or right here. Electrical force is directly proportional to the product, multiplication of the two charges. Electrical force is inversely related to the distance squared. And the K is the Coulomb's proportionality constant, that 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. How is Newton's law of universal gravitation similar to Coulomb's law? Well, certainly at looking at the formula, and the r here being the distance squared. Similarly, they both have proportionality constants. Take a closer look at the capital G proportionality constant here. So the similarities are most visible in that equation write-up, also in the way in which we describe. The closer two objects, masses, charges, bodies are, the greater attraction of force and the greater the distance between the charges, masses, objects, and bodies are, the less force. 
So there's quite a few similarities with Newton's law of universal gravitation and Coulomb's law. The differences lie not only in just the proportionality constants, but application-wise. Coulomb's law is on a small scale. Examining the amount of electrical force of attraction or repulsion between subatomic particles, neutrons, protons, electrons. Universal law of gravitation is on a much larger scale, looking at the gravitational attraction between Earth, the ball falling towards the Earth, Earth moving up towards the ball, Newton's third law, and uh, things such as planets. So here's a way to show the differences and yet again the similarities between the two formula. So a satellite in motion about a planet, as Newton originally pondered, how come the moon doesn't fall towards the Earth? This is on a macro, large scale, and Coulomb's law on is, on a, is on a micro, a much smaller scale, that of the electrical attraction between the negatively charged electron and positively charged proton. The proportionality constant K was something you looked at in Physics A in the Charge Study Guide. We do have another proportionality constant specific to the law of universal gravitation. That's a capital letter G. Both inverse square laws have proportionality constants, but the Coulomb's law constant has a large magnitude, 9 times 10 to the 9th whereas the magnitude for the gravitational proportionality constant is much, much smaller. It will be 10 to the minus 11th. Here we got a nice little combination of large scale, small scale, micro and macro. Nice image here, thinking of the similarities between the two. What is the value of g, the quantitative value of g? This is not a value you'll have to memorize. It'll be something that'll be provided for you on your reference sheet. Also found on page 0 in the study guides. And it's right at the very bottom. g is 6 and 67 hundredths times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. The next clip you're going to see is how this formula is used to find the mass of planet Earth. We don't really have the means to get a balance scale for someone to place the planet on and tell us what the mass of the Earth is. I'm going to show you a clip on how this can be done, and I think it will be uh, surprisingly easier than you might think uh, based on this formula in terms of easy, meaning equipment that would be necessary to figure out the mass of the Earth. However, the beginning of the clip does uh, begin with the title of Weighing the Earth. We are the beneficiaries of some amazing mathematical processes, sophisticated techniques that have revealed important details about our universe. These processes often involve a formula, like this one. This formula represents hundreds of years of endeavor and many collaborations among great minds. I'll show you how to use this powerful mathematical expression and some simple equipment to actually determine the mass of the Earth. Let's start with Isaac Newton. Newton's law of universal gravitation states that two objects in space attract one another with a force that is proportional to the product of their masses, m1 times m2, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, r squared. Looks like this mathematically. Released by Newton in 1686, this amazing insight revolutionized how people thought about the structure of the universe. But it was another hundred years before this brilliant statement was crafted into a precise formula. That feat was accomplished in 1798 when English scientist Henry Cavendish actually measured the force of attraction between two objects. This was an amazing feat. The force of gravitational attraction between small objects is almost impossible to detect. As a result of Cavendish's work, Newton's original statement was refined to this precise formula. 
F equals G times M1 times M2 divided by R squared. This is similar to Newton's statement, but notice we now have a capital G in the formula and an equal sign. The capital letter G represents the universal gravitational constant. Cavendish's work was essential to determining G. G represents this number, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, and it completes Newton's formula. We can now determine the mass of the Earth. The formula has two masses. The Earth will be one mass, and this sphere, a bocce ball, will be the other. I'll designate this sphere as M1, and the mass of the Earth will be M2. Sitting the bocce ball on our scales, we see that M1 has a mass of 552 grams. That's 0.552 kilograms. Next, we can determine force with a Newton spring scale. The force of gravity acting on the bocce ball is 5.4 Newtons. Next, we need the distance from this object to the center of the Earth. That's R in our formula. The ancient Greeks figured this out thousands of years ago. A good estimation for R is 6,371,000 meters. Now we have everything we need to calculate the mass of the Earth. I'm going to rearrange the formula before I plug the numbers in, so our formula becomes this. We are solving for the mass of the Earth, M2. Plugging our numbers in creates this. For clarity, I've left the units out. Just the numbers are displayed. Doing the math, we find that the Earth has a mass of 5.78 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The NASA website states that the Earth has a mass of 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. With simple equipment aided by some powerful math, we have come up with a reasonable approximation for the mass of the Earth. For more science and technology videos and projects, visit our website, hyloroad.com. You may have picked up in the clip here who determined the value of G, and that was Henry Cavendish. C-A-V-E-N-D-I-S-H. Cavendish. He used an experiment using a torsion balance to determine the amount of gravitational attraction between objects, or how one could do that, considering the value of G. The following two pages in the study guide help us think about the qualitative aspect of Newton's Law of Gravitation in terms of not necessarily plugging in values for mass, like the mass of the Earth is this, the mass of another object, what's the gravitational attraction between if they're so far apart. It's really thinking about qualitative in terms of if I double something, if I decrease it, we will do the quantitative plug and chug substitute numbers and calculations later. But first we want to think uh, in terms of if I just double one of the masses or triple the distance between objects, how does that change the original gravitational attraction between those objects? If you look through here, this will give you a description, a process to follow to do numbers 1, 2, and then I believe on the next page 3, 4, and 5, maybe 6, but a few more. And this stands for F sub old, not fold. And this is F sub new. So you're showing the relationship in the new constraint, meaning if all of a sudden I double the masses, what happens to the force? So read through the instructions. It will very much help you in answering one, two, and the following page items.